Good morning. Welcome to the XM.com weekly market update. And with me once again is Peter Maguire, the CEO of XM. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Andrew. Let's have a look at some of this data. Once again, plenty of volatility over the last week. Um, domestically, not a huge amount happening. The Aussie dollar is still flirting with 62 US cents, hanging just above it at the, at the moment, but um, certainly well, under whisker. pressure. Under pressure. Yeah, the US dollar's given off a little bit, Andrew, in the last 24 hours. So I suppose that's been respite for the Aussie and where it bounces from here, maybe there's a little bit further downside. We'll cover that a little bit later as far as yields, but that US dollar has been on fire and everything else has been crated. So let's just see. Um, as the US dollar did give off some steam, Bitcoin went up 10%. Yeah, I know. It's uh it's certainly the US versus everything else at the moment. So King same, dollar. Yeah, uh, we look at uh, over to Japan, the CPI numbers came out um, 3%, fairly steady with those numbers, which I think from an inflation perspective in Japan, they would be reasonably happy with that. So, yes, they would be. Hmm. We'll just, we've got to see if there's going to be intervention first off with the yen it's, as it approaches, it actually went through the magic 150 mark in the la again in the last 24 hours, I think. So there's that side of it and what the policy statement's going to be from the BOJ leading into Christmas. Do they look at, you know, a rate rise or do that? What, what do they do? How do they play it? Um, we're in their hands, but there's been plenty of wild swings on the yen yeah. in the last few months. Sure has. And, and looking at that yen, the, the chart tells a story. So that's just a one year chart. But yeah, and I think if you just look at those interest rate differentials between Japan and the US, they're just oh, enormous. Exactly. If there was one market to trade and you only traded for the whole year and gave it all away and just traded one market, that's it. Mm. And that really is mind blowing. Yeah. You know, the yen movement and what can be achieved over that window of 12 months has been just game on and how many other markets have shown you know blowouts like that mm. have a look at gold have a look at dollar yeah. the uh the short-term traders certainly love it you bet that's why we've got over 10 million mm. and it's um yeah it's just shows the depth of the market it certainly does um over to the euro once again not an economy that is traveling very well at all the gdp has been pretty close to zero the last couple of quarters yeah. and those pmi numbers are pretty horrible to be honest yeah the business surveys andrew they're shocking and it's going to be bleak i think in fourth quarter and certainly into first quarter 24 and how, what the well where does the ecb play lagarde's coming out this week there you know probability i think it's about 99 percent that there won't be a rate rise and there's the next decision going to be a, a pullback mm. we're just in the hands of them but yeah it's uh, certainly in a pretty tough time the old eurozone and we've just got to see how they fare into christmas yeah certainly do uh the us um, on the other side of the coin, the, um, the GDP numbers are looking reasonably good at the moment. So yeah. it's, um, the economy is holding up very well, obviously pretty close to full employment over there. Uh, there are plenty of pressure points there, but it's certainly hanging in there compared to a lot of other established economies. Absolutely. Two things I'll touch with. First off, last quarter was 2.1%. I've recited these numbers, so I know it. 4.1% is what the headline is going to be this quarter. That's what they're saying. The Atlanta Fed does their own model and they think it's going to be 5.6 percent or higher so and they're very rarely wrong mm -hmm. so let's see where it drops this week and then the impact that's going to have naturally to rate policy from fed chair powell what's his thoughts and we all know what happened with the 10 year we're going to move into that in a second second point is uh the puts of the s p 500 put options and as you know that's to put is put down call is to call up um, there were very, very high numbers, and so everyone's being bearish as far as equity. So this is going to be interesting, the lead up to Christmas, how far the equity markets come under pressure and earnings season. We've got the big monsters trading this week, I think, announcing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meta, Amazon. Yeah, coming out shortly. So yeah. all, all the banks have come out, and the banks, pretty much most of them, did pretty well, actually. So yeah. Surprised. But then again, not, not surprisingly, because banks tend to make a lot more money in a high interest rate environment. So that's yes. not surprising. So Defaults will only be their major concern moving yeah. forward. Um, once again, we talked about the 10s with the 10-year treasuries touching on 5% now and the dollar index, once again, around that 105 and a half mark. So yeah. extremely strong. Yeah, exactly. The 10 year has been incredible. We had 40 basis points of volatility at the, towards the end of last week. Touched five or went through five and then all of a sudden pulled back. So that's 5%, that is. So, you know, talk about wild gyrations and what that impact is naturally to dollar. 
and then how that plays. The US dollar's given up a bit of steam, and as we mentioned earlier, as far as currencies. So I reckon, I do think that there will be a rate rise from the Fed before Christmas. We'll just have to see. They've only got two times, well, they've got early November mm. and they've got early December. So we've just got to see. If that GDP comes in very, very strong, I don't think they're left with any alternative. Yeah, and I'll make, make the move. So, And I think the market, maybe not November, but December, the market is probably expecting it at the moment as well. Mm. Time will tell. Yeah. Finally, we've got the um, oil once again. It's bouncing around between that 85 to 95 sort of markets. Yes. Pulled back slightly in the last few days. But um, as we've spoken about a few times, with all this geopolitical turmoil at the moment and mm. obviously still in the Ukraine and now in the Middle East. Yes. Uh, there's obviously, obviously that risk that that could spike a bit. Yeah, well, the, you know, the war premium seems to be stripped out a little bit in a couple of bucks and that's not unusual because, but you know, it just uh, evaporates and we've just got to see what the consolidation is over the next couple of weeks and what happens as far as the ongoing issues with Israel and Hamas mm. or Palestine. So when you sit here in Sydney, <laughs> We're very isolated from the world, and you only, only got to see that from a you know geography map. Mm. It's a long way from anywhere. Mm, certainly is. And we're removed from all of these turmoils, and we're for that we're blessed. But to our brothers and sisters everywhere else in the world, it's um, yeah, it's a different world. Yes, yeah, sure is the uh, the advantage of uh, living on an island. So, but but you're right, you are. You hear about a lot of it, um, but with no sort of direct Context. impact yeah, of, of how we operate here. So. You know, and just on that, I, you know, for the, our listeners out there, uh, people say, is per- I, I was questioned, is Perth close to Sydney? No, it's not. It's 4,000 kilometres as the crow flies. And Perth is the most isolated capital city mm. in the world. So that just demonstrates again, that's the other side of the nation. So yeah. really it is, it's, our, our show takes us on a global footprint and it's uh, sometimes nice to just to discuss those geographical um, yeah, frameworks than mm. where, we, where we speak from. Yeah, I yeah, know, it's a, certainly a big, a big nation, there's no doubt about it. Oh, so. yeah. With no one here. No, that's right. It's a, not a huge population. So, But once again, plenty going on. We'll keep an eye on these markets over the next week and we'll uh, regroup again next week. I look forward to it. You know, we've got uh, lead up to early November, what's going to happen with our um, RBA rate policy and the Fed and Lagarde this week, and Japan. Mm. So, yeah, man, it's plenty of action. Yeah. And have a look at gold. Mm. So, yeah, it's been a vibrant two weeks. Yeah, there's plenty going on. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on things, and we'll, uh, we'll catch up again next week. Look forward to seeing you, Andrew. Right. Thanks, Pete. And that's the XM.com Weekly Market Update.